All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. It is about 1.54 on this Saturday afternoon, uh, June 29th, and I hope that you are doing well. If you see some cars in the background, it's because I'm in my front yard, and uh, it is a warm day outside today, but I just decided to come out here and do this and under this uh, shade tree, and uh, I, got ho I hope that you are doing well. And I want to encourage you today from God's Word, from Psalm chapter 104, and uh, just something the Lord laid upon my heart this morning as we were in prayer meeting uh, at Covenant Church. And um, But before I, I do that, let me just encourage you to press the thumbs up button or love if you're watching on Facebook. Love this, share this video. If you haven't done so already, again, subscribe to the Corner Ministries YouTube channel. And um, also, tomorrow at Covenant Church, we are having a guest minister, uh, uh, Minister uh, Jeremiah Castillo uh, from Birmingham, Alabama area. And he is the, the, the chaplain for the football team uh, for Alabama. And uh, a tremendous man of God. And he is going to bless us. I know the Lord's going to use him greatly. And... Um, and so if you're able to watch it tomorrow, whether live or later uh, afterwards, uh, you can do so. We can be, we'll be streaming live over Facebook and then over also at the same time streaming live over um, uh, our YouTube channel, Cornell Ministries YouTube channel. So I want to encourage you today from Psalm 104, and I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but I want, I'm going to summarize it because uh, this morning in our prayer meeting, um, I was I was drawn to uh, Matthew chapter six, and it's the great the end of Matthew chapter six is the great do not worry passage in the Bible, and where Jesus says five times five is the number of grace, he says five times do not worry, 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 and he says don't worry on on what basis on the basis of and this is the basis that Jesus gave. He said, as our Father, with God as our Father, and that can only be done through uh, faith in, in Jesus Christ, that he's the Son of God, that he died for our sins, and he rose from the dead. Uh, but now, if you've done that, God is your Father now. He's not just your creator, and he's not just your judge. Thank God for that. Now he is your loving Heavenly Father, and you have a loving, living relationship with God as your Father. The same God that said, let there be and made all of creation, made this beautiful green color behind me, okay? Made the trees, okay? Made it all. And and those type of things are sometimes stated often, you know, the God that created the universe and he loves us and it can be, it can become a cliche at times, but it is the truth. And that is the truth that Jesus said lays the groundwork for God taking care of us. As our, if, if he is our father, then you and I don't have to worry about anything. Why? It's because God takes care of the birds. God takes care of the lilies of the field. God even takes care of the grass. Think about that for a moment. He takes care of the grass. Okay, I just mowed this yesterday. God even takes care of that. And Jesus said, if God as your father takes care of that which is not redeemed, like the birds and the lilies and the grass of the field, then how much more will he take care of you? And I want to encourage you with, with that today. And I know it's a common, common passage, but I just want to encourage you. There is no need for you and I to worry because God takes care of his own and God is taking care of you. And in Psalm 104, why did I turn here? Because I was, I was looking, uh, excuse me, I was looking through uh, and I just, I turned to Psalm 103 and I was reading into Psalm 104. And what David does in Psalm 104 is absolutely amazing. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read the whole chapter. It's a long chapter. But it's a song that he wrote many years ago. And he begins it by saying this, Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. 
who cover yourself with light as with a garment, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. He lays the beam of his upper chambers in the waters, who makes the clouds his chariot, who walks on the wings of the wind. And so, and, he, and, and David goes on throughout Psalm 104, and I'll read a few other verses to give you an idea. You who laid the foundations of the earth so that it should not be moved forever. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At you rebuked, they fled. At the voice of your thunder, they hastened away. And, and, and I'm, I'll, I'll stop there. But what David does in Psalm 104 is he does very similar to what Jesus did in Matthew chapter 6. But David goes into more detail. And David, what he's saying there in Psalm 104, and I'm summarizing it here for the sake of time, but he names almost every single thing in creation. He names, he, he names the stars, he names the sun, he names the moon, he, he talks about the trees, he talks about the grass, the field, he talks about the mountains, he talks about the sea and the oceans and the lakes and the rivers, okay? He talks about the desert, he talks about the rain, he talks about, I mean, he talks about light, he talks about darkness, he talks about all the different animals, he talks about it all, and he says, God, you're the one that holds it all together. You're the one that takes care of all of those things. And think about that. Here's David under the old covenant, and he had a heart after God, so he knew the heart of God. And David says, God, you're the one that takes care of the trees, the grass, the fish, the mountains, the sun, the sky, everything in the sky, the clouds. You take care of it all. And God, without you, none of it exists. And everything will fall apart, Lord, if it's not for you. I want you to think about that for a moment. Everything in this earth, in a natural sense, will fall apart without the Lord holding it all together because he created it all. And what David is doing in Psalm 104 is he's bringing all of, all of creation into it and, 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 and bringing it all to a head, basically saying the same thing that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, that God, you're so great that, if, that you take care of all of creation and you take care of your children. God, you're taking care of me. And I just want to encourage you today. God is taking care of you. He's taking care of you. Do you believe that? He's taking care of you. And even in our sickness, he's taking care of you. Even in our weakness, he's taking care of us. Even in our despair, he's taking care of us, if that is where you are today. In your times of great joy, he is there and he's taking care of us. He's taking care of you today. And regardless of what it looks like in the natural, this is what we have to feed our mind on as a child of God. And, and we cannot feed ourselves on all of the negative. We cannot feed, because there's, there's, there's a lot of negative that David could have said in Psalm 104. He could have said, oh Lord, all of my enemies. And they, you know what, at times David did talk about his enemies, but he could have went on and on and on about all of his enemies, about all of his failures, about all of what he was going through and all the difficulty and all the opposition that was against him. David could have named all of those things and went on and on and on and on, but David didn't do that. He said, this is not a song of complaining and moaning and groaning. Again, not belittling what he went through or what we go through, but this is a song about giving glory to God who is great and he's greater than anything I might go through. And God gives us the grace to go through what we, again, what we find ourselves in. And today I just want to, I just want to encourage you and remind you that if God is your father, and again, that's only possible if you believe that Jesus is the son of God, that he died for your sins and he rose from the dead. And if you haven't done so, if, if that's not the case today, if Jesus Christ is not your Savior and Lord. If you've not invited him into your heart to be your Savior and Lord, you can do that right now. You can do that right now. Just acknowledge that you're a sinner before God. Say, God, I'm, I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I admit that I'm a sinner. And this is the ABCs. Acknowledge that I'm a sinner. 
you believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for your sins, that he rose from the dead, you believe that, you truly believe that, and you confess your sins. There's the sin. You confess your sin, and you confess that Jesus has forgiven you. You confess that you have repented of your sin, and now you've accepted Jesus into your heart, and now he is the one who directs your life, and he's given you a brand new life. If you do that, he'll come into your heart right now and be your Savior and Lord, and he'll give you a brand new life. Oh, what a wonderful Savior we have. Again, he will give you a brand new life. And even as a child of God, he will renew our mind, renew our inner man every single day. As Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16, he said, Though this outward man perish, this inner man is being renewed day by day. As a child of God, he'll he'll renew your spirit, renew your mind so that you'll feel born again all over again. And that's the way the Lord wants us to feel. He wants us to get saved and never get over it. Hallelujah. Because he's good. He's our heavenly father. He's not just our creator and our judge no more. Now he is our loving heavenly father. And we have a great savior and a great Holy Spirit in Jesus name. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage you with that today. Again, um, uh, Whatever you're going through, the good outweighs the bad. Praise God. I want to pray today for every need, and um, I want to pray for the spiritual needs, pray for the physical needs, and uh, pray for our country, pray for Israel, pray for this country again as we're going into, uh, this, is, this is the election uh, year, and uh, as you know, and there's other elections going on around, around the world, but what happens in the United States has a great influence on the other parts of the world, so spiritually and even politically. So we're going to pray for our country. And, um, and so I want to pray right now for physical healing, first of all. If you have a prayer request, you can put it in the comment section. We'd love to see where you're watching from. Type that in the comment section as well. Uh, just put in again, wherever, it, wherever it is you're watching from, okay? I'm... I'm here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, okay? Just type in where you're watching from. We'd love to see that. And, uh, and because we have those that watch different parts of the uh, United States, even and different parts of the world as well. And so do that. And, uh, but let's pray. Father, right now we come before you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we lift up every physical need right now in the name of Jesus. And if you need a physical request right now, I just ask that you agree together in prayer right now and just ask the Lord for physical healing. So, Father, we believe you right now in the name of Jesus that you are our healer, and by your stripes we are healed in the name of Jesus. We take authority in your name, Jesus, over every power of, infir of every infirmity, every power of darkness, every foul spirit. You are defeated in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we ask you for your healing virtue to flow right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, flow right now in Jesus' name and bring healing from head to toe, Lord, in the name of Jesus. From every infirmity, Lord, we believe you to do it, Lord. We believe you to heal Nancy, to heal Judy, to heal Jerry. Lord, we believe you to heal Eugene. We believe you to heal, Lord, every person on here that's named here, Patty and others, Lord. Uh, Ingrid, Lord, we pray for complete healing in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want to encourage you today that if you're uh, dealing with uh, a physical infirmity in your body, don't let that infirmity steal your praise. Don't let it steal your praise. You keep on praising God anyway. I want to pray now for the family members and prodigal children and, um, and for our family. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you. And we ask you, Lord, for salvation, Lord, for family members, Lord, that you would, that you would reach down your hand from heaven and, Lord, bring back Lord, the prodigal children, the prodigal family members, those that are backslidden. We pray, God, for the power of your Holy Spirit to arrest them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you right now that you are able and only you can. We believe that only you can. 
And we believe that, Lord, you would use words that have been spoken to them and bring it back to their mind, oh, Lord. Let them see the lies that they believed and let them look to you, Jesus, and give their heart to you right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray it. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I want to pray for the mental needs right now. Father, in the name of Jesus and spiritual, Father, we pray in your name that, Lord, you would have your way, that you would bring healing of the mind and the inner man, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Bring healing in spirit, Lord. Yes, Lord, for those who have been wounded, those who are hurt and holding on to it, I pray that today they would release that hurt to you. They would release the, the unforgiveness to you. They would release the bitterness to you, the resentment, the pain. Lord, the past, they would release it to you in the name of Jesus. So that the past would no longer be a chain, Lord, wrapped around that neck right now. We, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the past is gone. We release it and we forgive, we love, and we bless in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for healing in the mind and the spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're going to pray for our country. And um, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our country. And we pray, God, for a mighty move of your Holy Spirit to happen in this country. We pray, God, that revival would come. We pray that, Lord, you would move by your spirit in the White House, from the White House all the way down to every house. Lord, let the power of your Holy Spirit move. We pray that you would raise up laborers in the harvest fields, Lord, that, God, you would give your people boldness, Lord, that your people would receive your boldness. Lord, it's really not you, Lord, it's us. And, Father, we ask that you would forgive us as the body of Christ, forgive us as a nation. And we ask you, Lord, to forgive us and have mercy on us. Lord, do not deal with us according to our sins, but deal with us according to your mercy and grace. And we pray, God, for a great move of your Holy Spirit that souls would be saved. Lord, that you would raise up young people, O oh Lord, and elder people. Lord, raise up young people on college campuses that will stand for truth. We pray for our college campuses, Lord, and where lies prevail. And we ask you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit to move, even in, in very liberal and anti-Christ universities. We pray, God, for the Holy Ghost to move in dorms. Lord, move in classrooms, move in hallways in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, and reveal yourself in the midst of that darkness in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I feel that. You know what? There's no limit to what God can do. God can move in the hallways of very liberal universities. He is not limited. God can move in the White House. He can move in Congress, in the Senate. God is not limited. We need to pray that way. Praise God. I want to pray for Israel. Let's pray together. Father, right now, we lift up Israel as a nation. Lord, you said that you would bless those that bless Israel. And we bless Israel, Lord. We pray for their protection and for their victory in this present conflict. We pray that the hostages would go free, that you would confuse Hamas and Hezbollah, Iran, and every other group against Israel, that you would bring confusion to them, and they would lay down their arms and give up in the name of Jesus. But Lord, we pray for the hostages to go free, and we pray for a move of your spirit in Israel that many more Jews would come to know you, Jesus, as Savior and Lord, before the rapture, O oh God. We pray for a harvest of souls in Israel, and we pray for your people in Israel, that you would give them strength and boldness, that there would be a great move of the spirit, Lord, among the church in Israel, Lord. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to stop there today, uh, but I pray that you've been blessed. Again, press the thumbs up or love this on Facebook. Uh, if you're watching on uh, YouTube, press the thumbs up, share it. Uh, subscribe again to the Corner Ministries YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, and, and then tomorrow morning again, Jeremiah Castile at Covenant Church. It, it, he, God's going to use him. You will be blessed. I guarantee it. And, uh, and um, praise the Lord. I'm going to leave it there. So God bless you and have a wonderful day in Jesus.